welcome to you all and we're going to start this webinar. Uh, my name is Dave Humphreys. Um, my partner is Jane Collett and she is sitting on this as well. Uh, and hi. And I have to tell you before I go any further that I'm not very politically correct and often say things which people find offensive. And if I offend any of you tonight, I apologize now in advance. Um, send me an email and I'll explain why you're totally wrong to be offended. Totally wrong. Anyway, um, you're looking at the um, starter busy screen. And what we're going to look at is some of the AST tenancies on this um, map. This is working with the Essential Information Group, and can I interrupt you? Please do. <laughs> um, one message that I think you've mess, missed is to introduce yourself and how you're an expert. Oh, how am I an expert? Graham asked that, I believe. Why am well, I an expert? Yeah, Doug, Doug has said, for, for us that don't know you, will you intro and how you became an expert? Okay. Um, and then uh, I'll I, have gone on about due diligence. I'll try and keep this short. I have been buying properties at auction uh, for something like 40 years. Um, the reason why since um, 96 is that if you buy a property at auction, you can invariably increase the value of the property. Most properties coming through auctions are run down and need fixing up. And this applies to ASD tenancies as well. If you fix up a property, you can split the cost to fix up between repair and capital improvements, with the majority going down the repair route uh, by about a 70-30 factor. Um, and that means that you can increase the value, remortgage and pull all your cash out without relying on market-driven gain. If you can get your cash out of the deal, you can then repeat it. So I'm into buying uh, and improving property, and the major source of properties that need improving, need fixing up, are auctions. I also happen to like it. I, I, it's fun. It's fun. And I run a masterclass and teach it, which I'll come to in a second. But uh, whilst I do buy outside of auctions, uh, uh, auctions mean that I can buy, I can, I can view 20 properties in a day, and have a good chance or a good crack at buying a lot of them. So my background, since certainly for 96, which is going back, what's that, 10 years? 15, no, yeah, 10 years, is... Um, 20. That's 20 years, yeah, 20 years. Yeah, the, the, uh, Bytelet was launched in 96, and I, when I had finished my uh, analysis of Bytelet, and, and um, I went into auctions and uh, found stuff which was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Anyway, um, s sort of potted life history. And I've been buying at auction for, as I said, 20 years. Anyway, um, Essential Information Group, let's move on to the, to the ad side of this um, webinar. Two advertisements which are now, come, or marketing, which I'll come back to. Uh, Essential Information Group, is the data source of data for auctions if you're going to get into this seriously. And if you're interested, they're offering through us four weeks full access, one-to-one -one how to use tutorial on a central uh, on their site. And it is a complex site. Uh, simply email dh16 at eigroup.co.uk tonight for this offer. And I run a masterclass and some of the people on attending tonight have been to the masterclass. It, it's over a period of 28 days. Uh, it's run um, based on a Birmingham auction, but it's a combination of days in Birmingham plus uh, webinars plus uh, days away from Birmingham. It runs through April 10 to May 7, the next one. Uh, tonight's special offer is 1495. There are eight places left. I say eight places because there's a maximum of 12 on the master class. That's it. Um, for details or to reserve, email me at buying auction property. It includes hands on with the I group. And if you go to buying auction property, there are full details of the master class there. 
and I'll come back to this later, but that's the commercial for the moment. Um, now we're into the serious business of um, buying ASTs. Now, whilst there were the 239 properties, I've split them. Um, and first of all, I'm looking at sub 40k guide prices where there's no no SDLT, no stamp duty, because the whole idea of ASTs is to maximize your returns. You're not into capital gains, and in fact, if you go up into the northern area up here, your likelihood of capital gain is fairly slim. I mean, I've invested investors in South Wales, and um, in the in the valleys in the Rhondda valleys, and the possibility of capital gains there is pretty pretty limited. Um, but the, by going into sub forty, you're saving up to one thousand two hundred pounds cash per property, which is worthwhile. If you're going to buy a, a portfolio of let's say ten thousand ten properties, um, that's ten grand that you're going to save and not have to give the government. But you need to look at minimizing voids, and the way to minimize, vo minimize voids is quality property and quality location. Uh, the property you can control, the location you can also control by choice. So you don't buy something which is on a busy highway. You don't buy something, let's say, that's next to a pub uh, where you're going to get sort of problems. You don't buy something that's next to a railway station. Uh, maybe not opposite a supermarket that's open all night. Anyway, your choice. Um, quality property also generally, if you fix the property up properly, also generally minimizes repairs, which maximizes returns. Quality property also, excuse me, also um, quality property and location should minimize your letting and management costs or fees. Uh, if you present a good property to an agent, then um, he should uh, look at his fees a bit more carefully. Or, and in any event, your, if you're self-letting and managing, your costs should come down. And finally, maximum gross yields rely on quality of property and location, P&L, property locations. Now, by the way, do ask questions, and Jane will pick the questions up as I motor through. Okay, but I've got quite a lot I want to cover tonight, so uh, I'm going to push on. Now, here is a property which is a good AST hot lot, less than 40k example, and this is very current. This property came up at auction. This is 68 James Street in a place called Mardi in Ferndale, which is in the Little Rhondda. The, the Rhondda is, consists of two valleys, uh, the, the main Rhondda Valley and the Little Rhondda Valley. And this is at the top end of the Little Rhondda, Mardi. And after you leave Mardi, you're into the Breckens, you're into sheep country, no people. So at auction, Barna Marcus, London on Monday, Monday the 6th of February, this property came through. It's off location, in, and by off location, which is where you're, you're buying a property uh, in an auction which isn't on the location that where the property is. Here we've got a London auction, Connaught Rooms in London, and this property is in the middle of nowhere. Uh, to get to this property, you need to drive to Cardiff, or thereabouts, then head north, and it will take you about an hour from Cardiff if not longer than that, from the M4 to reach Mardi, uh, all the way up the, 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 the Rhondda, to reach this, this house with a guide price of 28,000 on it. Um, and it's the end of the world, literally. I mean, I, well, I'll say no more, otherwise I get into trouble. Uh, but you, if you're going to buy this sort of thing, you need to go see it. It's got an EPC of E, and I concentrate on EPCs because it indicates the current state of the, of the property. So it's not that good. It could do with work. And it was bought in 2004 for 25,000 pounds. I'm sorry the site is so busy. This is why I'm taking you through fairly slowly. Well, I think it's fairly slowly anyway. So it's a freehold terraced house, two floors, four rooms, under an assured short-haul tenancy. Guide price is 28k, 
and the rent is £4,200 a year, which is a, a gross yield of 15%, which is, I don't know where you, all you guys come from, but that's way above most of, uh, of what you see in the south, certainly, although you, in, in Wales it's quite common, and as you go north it becomes more common. Now, at auction on the 6th of February, this property was unsold at 37.5, pounds unsold but it is available at 38,000, which if you bought it, gives you a, a gross yield of 11%. So out of 4,200, you're going to be left with at least a couple of thousand pounds on which you're going to pay tax or which, you, which is profit. But interestingly, the local housing allowance annual rent that you're allowed to claim, and this guy, the tenant is on local housing allowance, is 4,800. This property was let in 2008 at 4,200, the rent hasn't been increased. So immediately you've got an opportunity to increase the rent and increase your gross yield up to 12.6%. Now on a cash buy basis, if you bought it for cash or bought it with bridging finance and you then remortgaged it 75%, which you should be able to do, you put less than 10K in. And if you relate the, 20, the, the couple of thousand pounds profit to 10K, it's a very good return. But don't expect the value of this property to increase rapidly. It won't. It'll probably stand still. But it does generate income if that's what you're after. Interestingly, the difference between the 25000 he paid for this property, or the, the owner paid for the property, and the 38000 is about the capital gain exemption of £11,200 per person. So I would suspect that the owner who bought it in 2004 is bailing out to pick up his CGT exemption uh, less costs, or before or after costs have been taken off. And this is a typical property that comes through the auction rooms. It's tidy uh, and um, it's, it's a potentially good deal. Now, I have proved this uh, uh, tenancy. I've spoken to the agent, which I'll come on to in a minute. And, uh, and it's subject to going and viewing the property. I'm satisfied that it is a genuine property under tenancy. Uh, and a single tenancy since 2008. So the tenant's been in occupation for, uh, what, eight years, nine years? It's his home. It's his home. And he would no doubt treat it just as that. And uh, on benefit, he can go up to 48, 4.8 rather, without any uh, damage to himself. Um, you know, it's not going to cost him anything if you, if you increase the rent uh, because it'll be paid by the... Uh, as the authorities. So, there is a good example of a sub-40 uh, uh, deal. I, I don't expect it's available now. Uh, I expect it's gone at 38 or thereabouts. But this came through the, the, the auction rooms on the 6th of February this year. So, to move on. Any questions, by the way, on this slide at all? No, 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 no. Do raise questions if you want to. Okay, so here we have the sub-40 guide, no SDLT. And over, since I announced this um, uh, uh, webinar, there's been some Facebook traffic uh, on the one of the, uh, the forums. And it's been pointed out that you can't get mortgages under 50,000. So what I've gone do and done is picked, gone back and examined the records, essential records, and listed the 40 to 60K guides uh, where 3% SDL, SDLT is payable. And here is everything that's coming through the auctions with a 40 to 60 guide during February at the moment. And this is a, ch a changing marketplace. So we do have some, some properties in the south here which are missing off, off the sub-40 guide, but then we're back up into this uh, northern area. And we'll look at some of these properties during this webinar as well. Okay, to move on. Legal packs. Now, 
always check on all lots, always check, but aside from everything else, always check the special conditions. In the special conditions, you find minor costs, um, search fees, disbursements. They want you to pay the legal fees. These are all a few hundred pounds, um, but you need to know about them because if you buy at auction, and uh, you can't say afterwards, I didn't know about this uh, and get out of the deal. When the hammer falls, regardless, you're regarded as a sort of sensible, sophisticated uh, investor and you are stuck with all these costs. But increasingly, what's happening is heavy vendor costs are coming in. And here we're talking about some thousands of pounds. And to confuse you, they're put in in both text, i.e. they write it out in full, £3,721, 60p, and numbers. And you think you scan for numbers and, and skip the text and think, oh, that's well, okay. And we work with a firm called Big Woods in, in Birmingham, and uh, some of their vendor costs literally run up towards the sort of seven, eight, nine thousand mark. So do watch out for these heavy vendor costs coming through the special conditions. And look particularly where, don't just go and check the uh, legal packs today where the auction is coming up, let's say, in 10 days' time. You want to be checking these legal packs um, right up to the day before the auction. Sometimes the special conditions are literally put in 24 hours before the auction, which is, I think, very, very naughty. And, and even to the extent that you go to the auction and check the hard copies that are there, you must make certain that you are fully appraised with the legal packs and the content of the legal packs. And don't think having looked at it once, that is sufficient. It's not. Uh, you can go and – well, we, we'll, we'll try and find them tonight. We'll get, you can go and look at a, at a legal pack and think, oh, well, that's okay, that's fine, happy with that. And then you suddenly find that um, – it's been amended or added to uh, to try and catch you out. Uh, one advantage of being a member of, of the Essential Information Group is that they will advise you if the legal pack is uh, updated for any reason. The next, th excuse me, the next thing is to I always check the EPCs because it gives me an indication of the current condition of the property. If I'm looking at a property that is EF, even if it's let. It means it's very run down. It's got bad heating, bad insulation. I want stuff that is B and C, ideally. Um, and if it's E and F, it means there's an opportunity to fix it up and increase the value. Uh, e EPCs are, are a sort of um, uh, thing of mine, and I could spend a lot of time talking about where I think EPCs are taking us. Now, on the AST lots, there's a different set of um, due diligence that comes into play. There's a load of due diligence on all auction lots, but specifically on the AST lots, it's uh, added to. You need to see, and we'll look at some of them tonight, you need to see the tenancy agreement and make certain that it makes sense. Uh, a tenancy, you don't actually need a tenancy agreement, whether you guys are aware the fact that um, in England and Wales, you don't need to have a tenancy agreement. If you let a property to uh, somebody uh, and you take money, which is, you know, that make, creates a tenancy. And by default, that tenancy is an assured short haul tenancy. In Scotland, you do. You need a tenancy agreement, but not in England and Wales. It's just that if you don't have a tenancy agreement, the tenant can do what they like. Um, and uh, you don't have a leg to stand on. So, but you always need to check the tenancy agreement. Also, you need to confirm and meet the tenant. You're not just buying a property, period. You're also buying a tenant, in effect. Um, many years ago, uh, I, I'm going back about oh, nearly 20 years, 15 years, I went into Sheffield and looked at a, a property that was coming up, for, uh, that was let. And we, we, we got out of the car to view this property, and the, the girl that was showing it to us uh, got out of the car and was followed by this big bloke. And I said jokingly, um, is that your minder? And she said, yes. I thought, you're joking. 
And we walked into this house, uh, you know, knocked on the door, and she opened the house up. And there was this young girl inside the house with a, a baby, and she looked like a rabbit trapped in the headlights. And uh, she was being sold with the house. I mean, it wasn't a question. Of, she didn't know what was happening, where she was going to go. She didn't know who was going to be her landlord tomorrow. And uh, she was terrified. Anyway, please go and confirm you've got a tenant and meet them because they bec they're your tenants and you should ha you, you have a responsibility with regard, I think anyway, you've got a responsibility with regard to housing people. But more importantly, more importantly, prove occupation. Prove occupation. There was a case, uh, again, I've got to be careful what I say, but there was a case where um, the property was subdivided into eight um, flatlets and uh, the uh, property was sold subject to ASTs on all eight fatlets. And uh, there was a, one girl living there, and her job basically was to sweep up the drugs and the, and the syringes and so forth. But all the ASTs were bogus, and it was bought by a London investor, and um, the whole thing fell over. Um, it, it was unwound because it was fraud. But you must prove occupation, and one way to do that is to check the utility accounts. Make certain that if you're meeting Mrs. Smith or Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that they've got utility accounts, they've got some way of showing you that they are living there. And see how long they've been there. You know, a, a, a one month, they've moved in a month ago. Be, be, be careful, be careful. Been there since 2008, fantastic, or 2010, or a year, or whatever. Generally speaking, there'll be a managing agent involved. Go talk to him. He'll, be, he'll, he'll welcome talking to you. Uh, invariably, if you're if you're going into sub forty, you'll you'll probably want the property managed anyway. Um, get his take on things, and more particularly, ask about rent arrears and deposits. A lot of this cheap accommodation they don't pay deposits. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you this later on, but you want to know what the full position is. And you've got to confirm all this outside of the legal pack. Don't rely on the legal pack to bring all this to your attention. And finally, ask the tenant if they're happy. Go meet them. I mean, you, you don't have to meet them through the agents. You just go knock on their door. I mean, they're people. So go knock on the door and say, I'm thinking about buying this property. Can I talk to you about it? Do you want to stay? What do you need fixing up? What do you want? Properties sold by landlords, they're not necessarily in the best of shape. Uh, the tenant doesn't know what's going on. The tenant's been there for some time, and th they're disturbed. I mean, you're a stranger. Uh, they've got to get to know you. Are you going to be nice to them or not? Uh, or are you going to chuck them out and um, sell the property over their heads? Because you're selling their home, or you, you might be. So find out what they want. You must satisfy yourself not only about the property, but also about the tenant that you are um, taking on. Uh, if he's not a happy camper, then you, you, you're buying problems. So he needs to be a happy camper. Anyway, um, whatever the word is, rant over with. But uh, it, as I say, it's a, it's a different um, a different approach buying properties which are under AST tenancy, because a lot of these properties you'll find that they've gone periodic. You know, the actual uh, 12 months is up or six months is up and they're now holding over and therefore they're subject to two months notice so you can simply turn around and say I don't like your face I'm giving you two months notice to get out bingo regardless of, of, of uh, their problems or where they, they are so they're, they're nervous they're, they're worried so go and talk to them and see that you're happy with them and you you see eye to eye with them okay Right, to move on, um, uh, back to the ads again. I'm going to leave this now because um, what we're going to do now is go into the uh, central information group and start looking at some of these properties. Uh, and uh, um, Right, portfolios. And we're going to start looking at um, the sub-40 here we go. Now this is a bit torturous because I have to keep rolling back and forwards. But let's see what we find. It takes time to load this. 
and there's no way I can avoid doing it. So what have we got down here in Wales? Uh, I think this, this in fact is what I've already shown you. So let's, um, this is live by the way, let's move up to Birmingham I think it is and see what we've got here. So here we've got a property which is being sold by Big Woods. Um, 30,000 is the guide price. Now I'm, I would add that uh, Big Woods guides, generally speaking, are exceeded quite heavily. But we're starting off with a 8,700 pound income, which is a 29% yield. I've been here before. I've given myself a note to view the street history. So I'm going to go and do that. And what we've got here of interest is a short lease. So now this is the sort of information you, you, you get from Essential and why it is essential that you join. <laughs> 8 Kingswood Road, £30,000. And if we go down, roll down, we've got, we will find that here we've got properties being sold again. So we've got a 30,000 um, plus uh, guide price here uh, in the auction on the 23rd of, uh, of February. But uh, Cottons, another Birmingham auctioneers, sold the property uh, in January, February, April last year for 59,000. So that will give you an indication of what they're expecting. They're not expecting 30,000 pounds, they're expecting at least 59,000. And here we've got the lease details, which is 50 years from 76. So it's a short lease, it's not mortgageable. So you're buying income, but the, uh, the, the mortgage will be very, diff very difficult. And then we, we roll down, here we have it again, and now it's been sold in 15 a year earlier for 61,000. It's gone from 61 down to 59. So you get the whole history. Here we've got the property again. Back in 15, it sold for 101,000, same property. 101,000 dropped to 61. So somebody took, a, took a, a shower on that one, or haircut, big time. So you can see the history of what's going on on, on these lots without going any further at all. So this type of de due diligence is necessary before you go and meet the tenant. So to get back out of here, which takes them, can take a bit of time. Um, please be nice to me. Um, that's my only notes on that property. We will find stuff that's worth buying, by the way. Um, right, so let's uh, look at another, whoops. Look at another in the Birmingham area. Whoop. This is what happens with live TV on the internet. Let's look at that one and see what that one is. Here's a flat. Now, this is an interesting flat, I think. Um, 20 to 25,000 pounds. It's one, two, three, four, five stories. It doesn't look like local authority. Uh, let's, go, let's open this up. But anyway, up to five is mortgageable. Um, 8,100 is a 32% yield on this property. But the problem is that 25,000 is below the mortgage. Uh, you need to pay a lot more for it than that. But there is a neat little leasehold second floor, two rooms, uh, flat in Birmingham. Um, don't know whether it's got any history to it. But £25,000 gets you a high return. I'm sorry to have to do... Flat 16, uh, oh, here we go, here we go. 
So we had one that uh, a leasehold second floor flat, flat 16, we got oh yeah, same flat. So here we have it. It sold for £40,500 in 2012. So I don't think that it's going to go for 25000 But at 40000 it's mortgageable. Uh, rent's now up to 8100 It was at 6000 giving a 16% return. So here we have a flat, as I said, which uh, they're going to be looking for 40 grand for it, or, or more than 40 grand, um, and uh, it's giving a good return, and at that price it would be mortgageable. And it, because it's not more than five stores, you should have no problem getting a, a BTL mortgage on it, having bought it. Uh, so the rent's gone up by close on £2,000. So that's an interesting, interesting uh, deal. Okay, let's get out here. This is an auction, by the way, this is live. This is coming up on the 23rd of February. Big Woods in Birmingham um, at the Aston Villa uh, uh, football grounds. And the, what, there was one more in Birmingham, I think, that we can look at. this one here and then we'll move north into cheaper country uh, 24 to 28,000 uh, flat uh, uh, 16% gross yield on these are all on the guide price by the way but as I said big woods guide guide prices tend to be low uh, over what is achieved. Uh, I put a little note here saying view history. So let's go and see what's happening in history. Um, essentially, you go and see these houses. So here we have the house, flat six. So there are two in, in um, yeah, the 23rd, that's right. There are two in this street. Uh, for this uh, 23rd auction. And here we have the house, 24 to 28,000 um, pounds, flat six, 78 Purse House Street, Warsaw. And here it appears again, flat six, sold for, no, it's withdrawn. So it's been withdrawn back in 2016. Question is why? Then if we curse down or scroll down, we come to it again. It was unsold. The last bid was £26,000. So they didn't like that much, that, that bid. And uh, it's this was back in July 16. So it's, it's developing a bit of a history. So it's £26,000 unsold. And they were now wanting 28000 for it. Um, if we go down further, flat six again, it's sold for 30,000. Last time it sold by Cottons. So you, you can see a history developing, which should alert you to problems. What's going on? What's going on? And it's so important that you really examine very carefully what's happening before you start looking at the assured short hold tenancy agreement. And then whether whether we've got the legal pack here or not. No, we just have, we've, all we've got is the EPC, and that's probably fairly low. We don't have any more legals on this at the moment. Let's see what the EPC says. Yeah, oh, look at that. That's terrible. Wow. It's, it, I mean, it shouldn't be, it's, it's almost uninhabitable. It must be so damp and cold to have an EPC of 21. In fact, uh, shortly, you, you, you wouldn't be allowed to let it. You wouldn't be allowed to let it. See what it needs. Look at this. No insulation, no insulation. Another dwelling below. Room heaters are electric terrible the only reason why they've got anything at all is they've got 
low energy uh, lighting in all the fixed outlets to get five stars for that it doesn't provide any heat at all that is terrible I, d I don't believe that appliance thermostats main controls <laughs> that's that's why they've even got a rating at all is because of the lighting which has cost them probably 20 quid <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, um, as I said, this is this is unrehearsed. This this webinar. Let's get out of here. Um, show legal documents. Let's go back to where we come from. Um, do have a look at these EPCs. That's a, a classic example of why they will give you a very good indication of the state of the property. If you want to have a happy tenant, it's got to be warm. It's got to be warm and draft free as well. Like your homes. Well, I hope anyway, they're warm and draft free. Okay, so let's leave Birmingham behind and go on up to, um, what have we got here? Uh, Grimsby, £35,000. Um, nice little terraced house. £4,940. And they've even given you pictures this time of the in inside of the house. Looks quite reasonable. Good kitchen, looks tidy. So £35,000 buys you a terraced house, or thereabouts, uh, buys you a terraced house in um, um, Grimsby, 14% 14, 14 gross yield. And I'll put a note to look at the legal pack. I can't remember why, so we'll go and look at the legal pack. What are we going to find there? This is why, by the way, I keep on mentioning essential, but I've got an AST here. But, uh, it, it, it's so easy with the AST. Okay, so let's let's look at the AST. I think I know what's coming up. No, I don't. Right, here we go. Take notes of the tenants agreement is a binding document. Uh, so we've got it between lots were limited, property £95 a week, six months uh, for 2016. Uh, June, so this is still in situ, it's still working, uh, £300. Why did I want to look at this? Managing agents are there. So that's it, is it? Yes, that's it. That's all you get, which really isn't enough. Uh, really isn't enough. You need to see the prop, the full tenancy agreement. This is uh, just the front page, and I wouldn't buy the property unless I saw all the clauses in the tenancy agreement and knew that 16 June 16, six months, it's are they holding over what's going on the other thing I don't like about it here is that it's, it's the rent payment day is Monday weekly it's a very expensive way of collecting rent it's collected every week it should be uh, made monthly uh, divide you know multiply the rent by 52 for the weeks and divide by 12 very expensive and you can't alter this without the tenancy agreement agreeing to it when you buy a property which is let, you are buying this tenancy agreement and you cannot alter it unless you get the agreement of the tenant to alter it. Um, so always make certain that you're satisfied and happy with the uh, undertakings and the, and the contract that you are inheriting or that you're buying. Okay? Um, you also need to know here where this deposit is as well because that's not your, the deposit of the tenant, well, it's the tenant's deposit, but it's not the deposit of the agent or the vendor, and you, you will take over responsibility for that ten, for that deposit. Okay, so let's get out of this one. Um, 
EPC, I did it with whether we that, that's worth looking at. Oh, I've got special conditions down here. Maybe that's why I want to look at this. Um, this is the work, work, work I do, by the way, when I'm checking on any property, whether it's let or not, uh, to see what I want to be doing. So good, a reasonable EPC at 67, potentially 88. Uh, I can get it up into the C, but the property is in generally good order, and this will be this will be confirmed by the um, the uh, the uh, here. Solid brick, assumed, assumed, insulation, and so forth. Okay, now let's go look at the uh, special conditions and see if there's any nasties in there. Special conditions, boom, 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 boom. No, nothing particular that grabs me at all. No capital allowances, no maintenance agreements, no employees, environmental, no no warranties. Uh, extra special. Now this is what you're going to pay on top of on top of the uh, your bid. So you bid uh, twenty-five thousand, whatever, thirty-five thousand pounds, and you will pay one hundred twenty-one pounds uh, VAT inclusive. Uh, in addition to paying the price um, for search fees, and you'll pay a buyer's administration charge of 750. Now, this is this is the auctioneer's charge invariably, um, but they're just bringing it to your attention. So it, it costs you to buy at auction, and this 750 in this case is inclusive of VAT, and it says you're not entitled to any set off. This is this is fairly standard, uh, it, 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 fairly standard. So it's not the sort of thing to be worried about, but it is to be aware of. I mean, if you're running very, very tight, you need to know where every penny is going to go. So here you've got the best part of a thousand pounds worth of costs uh, to pay on top of your bid price. Okay. So I'm not going to look at any other uh, aspects of this. So let's get out and go and find another property to look at. Let's come across, so I'm conscious of time. Um, so let's come across to this one. I don't know what that is. Doncaster. Freehold terraced house, £39,000. Being auctioned on the 15th of February. Okay. So it's the centre house. You can see the red um, lines around it. Uh, any history on it? 38 Cook Road. It's 40 Cook Street. Oh, oh, hang on a second. The whole thing's being sold. Wait a second. We're looking at 38A, um, but at the same time, 38's being sold, this end, and the other end. So in this auction, the whole lot is being sold, 38, 38A, and, 30, and 40. So there's an opportunity here to buy a terrace of houses if you wanted to. Um, uh, are they all let assured short hold assured short hold they are so you've got th th four thousand three you've got twelve grand's worth of income coming off thirty five seventy a hundred thousand pounds worth of or thereabouts uh, of one hundred ten thousand pounds worth of look now if you go to the auction on this one, the probability is if you bid on number nine which is the first one, 9, 10, and 11. This is a regional property auctioneers on the 15th of February. 
the probability is that you might be you might be offered the opportunity of buying the second one or what you paid for the first, given that these two are the same guides. You need to check with the auctioneers on that, in which case you may be able to stand on. It's called standing on. Uh, you may be able to stand on with regard to lot 38A, which is the middle one. So here is an opportunity to buy uh, three properties, a terrace of three, um, giving around a 12% plus return. Uh, now I just check whether we've seen this through, this through the auction rooms. We're looking at when we look at the history. By the way, we are only looking at the auction history, not general history on sale. No, they've not been through the auction rooms. So for some reason, this terrace of three properties is being sold, um, expected to go around the 40, I don't know, 40,000 possibly. Um, let's see whether we're getting anything out of the uh, legal pack on one of them. Auction contract, no, 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 no. Uh, this could be a big document. Um, we'll try and just have a quick look and see whether there's anything in that. This, this is unusual to find three properties. No, oh, it's very short, not what I expected at all. Not what I expected at all. Memorandum of sale. Um, so this is this isn't a, this isn't complete. There's more information uh, I'm sure to come on this. Um, let's get back to. No, this is not complete. Um, let's see whether uh, lot nine's got anything else in it. No official copy. No, 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 no. It's the same again. Anyway, unusual. Three properties uh, in a terrace, all coming up for sale in the same auction, regional property auctions on the 15th of February 2017. Um, if you're interested, there is an interesting lot. Uh, but you must check the, the ASTs on this. That makes sense. And go view, go view, go visit, go talk to the tenants, see if they're all happy with each other, uh, see if they're not having, they're not going to gang up on you, and make stupid demands and stuff like that. Okay. So, right. Now I'm also conscious of um, the time it's 10 to 8 so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap across to the um, other portfolio which is over 60,000 um, how do I do that I was trying to remember I go to here I go to there I do love essential EIG there we go so let's have a look at some of these. Now here we are with um, properties which have guides from 40 to 60,000. You're paying uh, SDLT on them all. Um, and we've got some in the south. And I'm going to start off with, uh, I think it's this one. No, it's that one. That's right, this one, for a reason. Um, and Carlton Road in Bournemouth. Now, what's happened here, that's why I'm starting with this one, is that uh, I'm going to open something else up uh, that came through to me today. I should try to open this elsewhere. and You shouldn't be looking at this. So I'm going to whip it away as soon as I can. Oh, I can whip it away now. Right. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, okay. Now the reason for uh, looking at this is that this property, as of today, um, was in the list to be looked at. Okay, and it's 13% uh, view history. 
when you f find out about, um, sorry about this, um, more my emails being downloaded, I said to view history. So this is p part of the webinar, I wanted to look at this property. Um, it's obviously got some history on it and um, show you what was going on. And then uh, this afternoon, and you have to move quickly on auctions, um, excuse me a second, that's right, this afternoon I received this email on this property, okay, I'll come back to the email in a second, I've got history here, um, here, here, it's all the same, flat, oh, flat six is down here, sold for 58,000, the guide price is 45 to 50, but it sold for 58,000 back in 14. So, you know, do we want to go there or not? But what happened today was that this email came in this afternoon. Uh, here we are, Wednesday, 8th of February at 4 o'clock, saying that I'd shown interest and, the, and they had now exchanged contracts and sold prior to auction. And that came in from uh, Fox and Sons. So this property is no longer available. It's been sold and they've completed probably, exchange anyway, um, sold prior. So it's a very good example that if you see something that you're interested in, you, you, you need to move. You need to get in there, uh, work out what your uh, maximum bid is, work out whether you want the property or not, get into the auctioneers and see whether you can do a deal before the auction. Don't wait for auction day. Uh, as I say, this is a very good example of a property going. The auction isn't until the 16th of February, but come the 2nd, uh, the 8th of February, uh, eight days away, uh, they wrap the sale up. So it's very important that when you see something coming through the auctions, uh, that you think might be of interest, do your DD, do your thorough due diligence, get there as fast as you can and tell the auctioneers of your interest and make certain that they keep you informed if they're going to ac accept a prior deal. To get, to get it prior, by the way, you will need to exchange contracts before the auction and, and you will be exchanging contracts under auction conditions. Okay. So, to move on. Can I, ask you, can I ask you a question there, David? Please do. Yeah. When you say, um, when people sell like that before the auction, wouldn't it be more interesting for them to wait for the auction? Because in a sense, the person who's, buy, who's offered to buy that uh, property, they're quite likely to turn up at auction and turn around with that kind of price, aren't they? And yeah, there, it, there might be someone else. There's no way. The yeah, there's no way of prejudging it. I mean, some no. some auctioneers will take will will sell prior and without a problem at all, and and very happy to do so. Other auctioneers, Foshy, for instance, Paul Fosh down in Cardiff, he will always advise his uh, uh, vendors not to sell prior. He would implore not to sell prior because he does nothing but set, but auctions. So if he sold his whole uh, his whole um, catalogue before the auction, he wouldn't have an auction to, to run. It, it's very much better. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's also a question: bird in the hands worth more than a bird in the bush. You know, if somebody needs yeah. the money and somebody comes along with the uh, the cash that the uh, vendor needs to have and is under pressure, I mean. Yeah. Going back to that property, I think it had been withdrawn. Wait a second, let's go back to have a look. Um, had this been withdrawn, the history, I think it was some history on this, I said view history. I think he'd already put it in and had to withdraw it. You just don't know why he's, why he's under pressure to sell. Yeah, okay. So the, main, the main point is that, okay. yes please. Um, Isla is asking, how would you look at shorter leases as for the one in Bournemouth? Uh, you've got to get your money out. You, uh, or, or, or the other thing is that you, 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 you would go, hope to negotiate a longer lease. I mean, 
you should be able to buy a lease extension or extend the lease for, for a price. So you need to add that to your yes. consideration, don't you? Yeah. You need to yeah. bear that in mind when yeah. you're bidding. It's another part of the DD. You go and see the landlord and say, look, I, you know, I want to buy this property, but I need, I need uh, uh, to extend the lease. Where are we on it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I hope that that was okay, Isla or Ila. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Yeah, there's no history on this property. I don't know why he's accepted the offer. You don't know why anybody puts anything into auction. The, the, the main point, though, is that if you see something that, that it does it for you, don't wait for the day of the auction. Get in there, express your interest to the auctioneers, see if you can do a deal. It's a very critical, I mean, just as an example uh, of this, I went, uh, I bought a property, I didn't buy a property at auction. Um, I went to an auction and I got my numbers wrong. I got my DD wrong. This was on a property in Wales. And um, uh, I always examine, if I, if I fail to buy, I always go back and do a post-mortem on the property and see why did I fail? Anyway, I didn't make, it didn't make reserve. I didn't, I didn't bid reserve. And so I went back and I found that I had, um, I, was, I was buying yield, I found that I got the rent wrong um, and therefore uh, I under quoted the rent in my anal analyzer and therefore the, the, the max bid was too low. So I rang up the auctioneers and said, um, is that the property wasn't sold, uh, where are we on it? And he said, well, it is now sold. I said, what do you mean it's now sold? He said, well, we've accepted, we've accepted a, uh, uh, an offer. I said, of how much? He said, reserve price of X. I said, is the money in, is the, money in the office yet? He said, no, it's, it's, it's on its way in. The, 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 the uh, uh, bidder was taking the money to the auctioneers. So I said, okay, fine. So if I can get the money to you first, it's mine. He said, well, if you can do it, yes. And I got dropped the telephone, phoned the bank up and said, please transfer X amount to such and such uh, auctioneer's account, because I knew which, what it was. Phoned him back and said, the money should be in your account now. And it was. And um, the deal was mine. And the guy was still mm -hmm. driving his car to the auctioneer's. And I got in mm -hmm. ahead of him. The money counts. It, it, it's that sort of world. Uh, you, 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 it's a very honest world. You've got to you know, honor, honor the word, your word, uh, but you can do deals like that. Uh, and uh, you know, it's the money in the bank counts. Anyway, um, let's look at a couple more of these uh, properties. I'm quite enjoying this. <laughs> uh, Started off, it's a good way of getting rid of man flu, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so I started with, come on, let's get out of here. Um, but do move quickly. I mean, EIG, EIG will advise you um, of everything that's coming up in a, in a location that is of interest to you. Uh, that day, uh, this is why they're so good. Let's just open up Birmingham and see what we're doing here. Um, this is another. Um, see history I've got again here. Uh, this is another property being sold by Big Woods on the 23rd of February. 14.4% um, 14 14 yield. Uh, and the street history, I think we've probably got this thing bouncing around inside the auction rooms. Where you get a lot of history, if this is the case, try and find out why, what's going on. Go see the property. There's always, generally speaking, a reason for it. So here we've got flat 246 uh, coming through at 40,000 with a decent uh, rent. So does it appear again? Here we go here. So it was last sold for 49,500 uh, back in 15. Uh, same rent, was it the same rent? Yes, it is. So the rent hasn't been increased since 15. 
2015, so it's due an increase. Um, so this guide of 40,000 40, is low, by at least 10,000. And if we flat to 46 again here, sold after the auction for an undisclosed amount. It was unmodernized here, and it was sold by Harmon Healy in London, and it was a repossession because, it was, because the vendor is the mortgagees, which indicates a repossession. Um, that's why I've said to look at the history on this. So the history here is it's repossessed in 2014 and sold through Harmon Healy in London for an undisclosed amount. It then pops up again in 15, a year later, where it's been bought and let and sells 49,500 and presumably it's been fixed up because here it's unmodernized and that's gone and it's also tenanted and you, you couldn't send, well you could, but it, would be, it wouldn't be very sensible to let an unmodernized property uh, and you wouldn't be achieving this sort of rent anyway. And then we come on up and it's back on the market again um, being sold by this guy who presumably did the fix up and getting out for some reason. So get round the, the neighbours, I mean there's other flats in this building as well, talk to the neighbours. Um, I talk to anybody, I'll stand out on the street and talk to anybody that comes along that might have some idea of what's going on. I'm totally shameless. But um, anyway, so th there is another property which uh, coming through Big Woods. Go and look at one more if I can, because it's now 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock rather, and um, my time is up, as they say. Um, I wanted to get up into the north. Choo, 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 choo. Okay, um, to, let's look at Derby. How about Derby? 40,000. Oh, this is an interesting property. Yeah, this has got everything going for it. I don't understand this one. Um, I, I, I'm glad I'm finishing on this one. I am finishing, by the way, for, for you guys that are sitting there. Check the legal pack. AST. Here we've got a property which is a freehold terraced house, two floors, five rooms, unmodernized, but it's it's let. Uh, garden development potential, subject to planning permission, loft conversion, assured short hold tenancy, and the front window is blocked up. I find that quite strange. Somebody's living in there. He can't look out the front window, or doesn't want to. Anyway, I'm checking the legal pack for some reason. Uh, which I can't remember why. Um, oh, the tenancy agreement. Maybe that was it. Or is it, 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 or is it it's because there's nothing there open? Yes, this is one. Now, don't buy a property on this. This is the tenancy agreement. And uh, that's all, it's just two pages. And it's got, oh, behind it, it's got the gas certificate. So it's one page, no, two pages. Now look what we've got here. We, very strange. We've got an agreement, letting unfurnished dwelling house, blah, 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 blah. It's all legal, it's all legal. Landlord, Mr. Barton, tenants. The dwelling house, okay, fine, 12 months, 90 pounds a week, by equal four payments, well, you don't. This is this is crazy. He's paying every quarter. Uh, he ha, he won't have the money. So here you are collecting the rent. Uh, the first payment be on the fourth day of January. Next doesn't put it doesn't give the year. Well, presumably it's uh, seventeen. I don't know. This, this was made on the 29th of February, December two sixteen. This is a very strange tenancy agreement. Um, uh, uh, if you see something like this, you've got to go and just, uh, check it out. You've got to go and see the tenant. Um, you know, however you do it, uh, it's up to you. But you've got to go and see, what are they called? Dawn Greaves and Trevor Simpson. You've got to go and see them at, at, at Thorn Street because they're supposed to be making 
90 pound a week times 13 they're, sp they're supposed to be paying you what a thousand pound a thousand pound a quarter in in four lumps it's never going to happen it's never going to happen they'll spend the money some other place so that's the sort of crazy documentation you get in this you got right notices and everything else but if, and there's nothing. I mean, the tenant could do virtually anything they wanted to in this property, and you, you and you'd have uh, uh, virtually no no comeback against them at all. Anyway, it's nine o four, and I'm going to bring this to an end. Um, maybe I'll do another one. Actually, I could do. If you guys are interested, I could do another one on, on the same subject next Wednesday, another hour on it, and go further north into the. Um, wilds of uh where would we be going um up into uh, manchester liverpool um where the uh here we go because there's a whole lot of stuff across this band for the 40 and the the 50 60 um through here a whole load of stuff uh up in this area here uh, I'd be quite happy to come back next uh, next Wednesday and carry on uh, with this uh, AST webinar and uh, get up into these properties, both uh, sub-40 and 40 to 60, and have a look at um, what we've got up there. Uh, so, up to you. Anyway, thoroughly enjoyed it, and my man flu's gone away. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you found it useful. And... Um, just to finish off with the um, the uh, um, what's the name the um, do consider very seriously uh, taking advantage of David's offer uh, David Sanderman who's the MD David's offer of essential information if you're going to get into auctions this is essential as you can see from tonight and as I say we've got eight places still available on the April 10, May 7 masterclass. A few of you guys on tonight have been on that masterclass. It's 28 days, full details on buyingauctionproperty.com and the itinerary, etc. It's based on Big Woods. It doesn't all take place in Birmingham, but it's a, we view properties in Birmingham. You can buy in Birmingham if you want to, uh, but it's not intended as a, as a, buying, a buying masterclass. The reason for Birmingham is we get the range. I mean, but Big Woods sell over 100 properties in their catalog and I get the range of properties I need to be able to show you what the various options are. So that's why we're based in Birmingham. Spend two days viewing and this is with other members of the public as well. So you get 15 minutes to elbow your way around a house and we we do that early in the um, in the masterclass uh, going around with one of these executive coaches and um, then we, you decide if you want to buy something, we do the DD on it, and then we go to the auction, and uh, there's a whole more training there. But the majority, if, if I can train through webinars, we do webinars. So there's, during this 28 days, there's, I think there's nine or 10 webinars from 6 to 8 in the evening, or 6.30 to 8.30 in the evening, all recorded, and you can watch, you, you can listen to them you know, however long you want to listen to them. And then there's two days of viewing properties. There's one day at a, at a, at a chattels auction where you practice bidding, buying and bidding, and then we go to the main auction. And it's good fun. Anyway, that's the property masterclass, and it's nothing like Homes Under the Hammer. But um, as I say, eight places, 14.95, and come along. It's, max, it's limited to 12 people. That is the maximum. The reason for that is that I'm not happy to take taking more than... Uh, 12 people around a little terraced house or a little flat and trying to explain how it works in 15 minutes which is the the viewing time we get from big woods along with maybe 10 15 20 30 40 50 other people so that's the way it works uh, it's, it's hard work long days when we're when we're out on on location and uh, you're very welcome to come to it Okay, so let me hear, let me hear from you and uh, how you found this. Whether you want to, to continue with part two next um, next uh, Wednesday at eight o'clock, 
And if you do, uh, we'll, we'll carry on and we'll go up into the north. Okay? Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for getting rid of my man flu. Good night. <laughs>